Hi there, Griff Hamlin here. Welcome to this video where we are going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to show you any specific new lick today. Um, and I know that a lot of times people come to my videos for a cool little lick here, or a little trick, or a little tip or idea. But this is something I want to give you today that's going to work on your brain a little bit. And that's a really important thing when it comes to improvising. And uh, part of the impetus behind this is really just kind of my philosophy in general, which is that things are often made needlessly complex. Um, I have a, a rather famous video now called the four note solo, where I demonstrate how to use a simple four note pattern to create a, a 24 bar solo. And it's a pattern that I use often and that hundreds or thousands of blues players around the world use often and it works very, very well. And it's very, very simple. And many things on the guitar are actually very, very simple, but you have to be able to look at them in the right way. And so where one, one area that I see there's a lot of confusion is in the area of what are commonly called the boxes. So this is like uh, the pentatonic scale. Um, if I play what we commonly call box one, it looks something like this. And I'm gonna start on the A, the A down here at the fifth fret of the sixth string. Then the eighth, fifth and seventh on the fifth string, fifth and seventh on the fourth string, fifth and seventh on the third string, fifth and eighth on the second string, fifth and eighth on the first string. And that is how most people, my students included, learn that scale, okay? Um, and it's a good way to learn the pattern and get the pattern under your fingers. But what you need to think about a little bit more is how are you going to use that? What is it? What is it for? And what are you going to do with it? Because oftentimes what you're going to do with it and how you want to approach it has a huge bearing on how you're going to look at it. And you'd be surprised at how simply changing the way you look at something is going to radically change how well you know it. Uh, a lot of times a student will come into my room and I'll say, okay, play box one in the key of C minor starting on the third string, the first note that occurs on the third string. And all of a sudden, it's like they've never played that scale before in their life because you don't think of it that way, okay? Again, we, all, we almost all learn it starting on the sixth string which means it comes back to the sixth string. But here's the thing, solos don't go that way. It's very, very unusual that you would actually start a solo on the sixth string. In fact, I don't, you won't even hardly ever use the sixth string at all in one of your solos. So you would be very well served to learn how to play that scale starting from the top. So let's say that I want that same minor pentatonic and I'm gonna use box one, but let's say that I want the key of A minor and I'm gonna start from the first string. Same deal. But if Without watching me do it, if that's complicated for you, or if for some reason that feels weird, that would be a good thing to practice on, okay? Because again, the more ways you can look at that same pattern, the more music you can make from it, okay? Now, that same pattern could also be used in, as a major key, okay? If you look at where your root notes are, in a minor key, the root note is the note, the first note on the sixth string is what I call it. Each string has two notes. The one closest to the, to the headstock is the first note, and the second is the closest to the body. So there's the first note and the second note of the sixth string, the first note and the second note of the fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string, first string. Okay? So where are the root notes? Well, they are the first note on the sixth string, the second note on the fourth string, and the first note on the first string. Why on earth would you need to know those? Well, those, and by the way, those are the minor roots. I should be clear. Those are the minor roots, because in a minute we're going to talk about major. All right, so those are the minor roots. Well, why do you care? Because let's say you need to play in the key of D minor. All right, well, in that case, if I want to play in D minor, and I want to start on the first string, I need to know that the root of that box, that position, is my first note up there. So now I can play box one in D minor. Okay, 
Now, so far, all I've done is play a box in a key. I, I haven't applied it to anything yet, and that's really, really critical that you understand the difference. Why would I want to play the D minor pentatonic scale? Well, to solo over a, a blues in the key of D is, is kind of an obvious choice. There are plenty of other uses for it, and, and that's kind of a whole different conversation. But I just really want to be specific on what we are doing, okay? So what we are doing right now is playing a minor pentatonic box one from a first string root instead of a sixth string root, okay? You should be able to do that for any key, okay? You should be able to, to make up any key. In fact, you can kind of do this with flashcards, for example. All right, let's, uh, and, and I'll get to that. Let's, let's talk about major keys really quick though, okay? So, as you may know, right? These are the, these are the minor roots. Okay, well, every minor key has a relative major. So as well as being the key of A minor currently, this box is also the key of C major, okay? A minor and C major are relative to each other. Now, if the theory behind that is not something you understand, you may want to pursue that and, and get, a, get a little bit of a grip on that. Otherwise, this may seem a little confusing, and I apologize. Explaining that completely is a little bit beyond our current scope. But my major roots are the second note on the sixth string, the first note on the third string, and the second note on the top string. So notice that I, when I play it from major root to major root, it sounds kind of major-y, a little bit country, if you will. As opposed to, if I play it from minor root to minor root, it has a little more of that blues edge. So even though I've played the exact same set of notes, where I've chosen to start and end, what in my mind was the most important note, and that's what's critical about this, it's all up here. I haven't changed any of the notes on the fretboard, I've only changed what I am treating as the most important note, okay? So that's very, very important. Now, sometimes you have to start in the middle. Sometimes you don't want to start on the first string and you don't want to start on the sixth string. Well, what if I said you need to play in the key of C minor and you need to start on the third string with the first note of the third string? Could you do that or would you get confused? If you can't, that's something you should be able to do. And how would, you, how would you approach that? Well, pretty easy. I, I'm, in, I'm in C, if I'm in C minor, I know from the old fashioned way that I could start here at the eighth fret, right? So I might have to go through kind of a two step process where I first find my root on either the sixth or the first string, and then I just jump to the third string and go from there. Now, why would you want to do that, for example? Okay, well, maybe you're, maybe you're comping. Maybe you're playing uh, a blues. And a little fill comes up. And you're, you're there playing your chords, so you want to play a fill that's right there as well, okay? That's a very, very common reason to need to know the box in a different place, okay? Or from a different string. So what I would actually suggest that you do, um, I mentioned flashcards earlier. If you think about it, okay, there's, there's six strings and there's two, uh, two notes on each string, right? We have the first and the second. So imagine if you made flashcards of every string with both combinations. So you have sixth string with, uh, with the first note, sixth string with the second, fifth string with the first, fifth string with the second, so on and so forth. And imagine you turn one over and it has, you know, uh, second and, and pick a key, you know, like let's say you're going to do A, okay? Um, you should actually have probably flashcards of keys too because it doesn't really make it tough unless you change keys every time. So let's say you turn over one and it says key of D, you turn over the next one and it says second string, second note, okay? So now you're going to have to find that in the key of D, the second string, second note is right there. And then play through the box. And, and just go through it all the way and, and, and get back to that spot. Now, I know that seems kind of esoteric. It seems kind of, kind of random and kind of bizarre, but I promise you 
that if you do it, you will learn that box and that position way better than you know it now and probably better than you imagined you possibly could know it. But the thing is, that's really how well you need to know it. And I say that because, again, going back to my philosophy that things should be simple, okay? I can play all kinds of crazy stuff, and a lot of guys can play all kinds of crazy stuff. At the end of the day, however, 99% of what I play is pentatonic scales. It's using these boxes. I might be mixing them together, which again is really only possible when you can you can find them and move about them in any way, shape, or form as I'm describing to you today. Okay, but learning all these boxes, this is is almost all, if not all, of your music is gonna be here. Okay, there are other patterns, of course. There's the four note solo pattern and there's this one, I call it the house pattern or some people call it the BB King pattern. You know, yes, there are other patterns, but I promise you that most of the time you're gonna find yourself just like Stevie Ray Vaughan, just like Buddy Guy, just like Albert King, just like BB King. Those guys pretty much live in boxes one and two. And there's a very good reason for that. There's an enormous amount of music there. And so to, to go and look for other patterns or other scales or whatever really isn't the best use of your time more often than not. It's learning the ones that you have even better, going even deeper down that rabbit hole and, and being able to play them truly from any angle, okay? So um, I hope that you will work on that. I hope you'll take my suggestion. You know, you could write A, B, C, D, E, F, G on a piece of paper and just, you know, turn, up, turn it over, make flashcards out of them, you know. Uh, you can tell I've been working with my kids a lot on math homework flashcards. But, but, but they work, you know, something that will, that will give you a random key and a random box position and bang, and you go and you try it out. And of course, once you can do it on box one, you try it on box two, you try it on box three, you try it on box four, and you do it on box five. And I absolutely promise that by the time you're done with that, you have got them all down and you can use them however you want because you'll be able to see them in whatever way you need to see them, okay? So that's gonna do it for us today. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get something out of it. I know it's a little odd, but it, the people that, that take what I've said and really go with it and try it, uh, I, I hope you'll, you'll leave me a comment and let me know how it goes after a couple weeks because I think you'll see some pretty radical improvement. All right? Again, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Talk to you soon.